my notes for the master class. Um, one, um, as an artist, there are, there are three things that you need to work together. You need time, space, and money. Right? If you've got one of those things, you can make, you can do something. If you've got two, it's fantastic. And three, it's Christmas. But you can't wait for three to all coincide. You have to find a way of starting. Now, the common thing with, with etching is that etching is the bringing together of time, metal, ink, and paper. But probably the most important is the idea of time. And I think in, in, in that way, sort of, um, etching can very quickly become a philosophy and a kind of an approach. Now, uh, time is expressed in lots of different ways in etching. Anyway, can you all understand what I'm saying? If there's anything that I'm, because I, I have to apologize, I, I'm English and I'm terrible at any language. I can order a croissant in Paris, and that's about it. Um, with, with, um, with, with developing an idea, that takes time. There's kind of gestation time in your head uh, as an idea begins to sort of take, take fruit. And something that I've always done throughout my whole life is I've always carried notebooks with me to jot things down little things I've heard, thoughts, um, drawings, things like that. Because in some ways, these are the things that kind of catch... Um, they, you don't know when they're going to be useful. And the wonderful thing is that you can then look back through these notebooks and things like that, and it can give you a... Uh, it's, like, it's like running back through a film. You can begin to see the things that you you thought, the things that you noticed, the feelings that you had, and things like that. And sometimes an idea may lay dormant for years until you suddenly find a way of, of expressing it. So there's that sort of, you know, very broad sense of time uh, as an artist in the way that a uh, thing develops. But essentially, in etching, time is absolutely crucial, and in fact, in many ways, it's, it's very much like photography in the darkroom. That an image that you draw on the, on the plate is, um, can become anything. You, can, you could draw an image on the plate, put it in the acid for a minute, and it would be as if a spider had just touched the surface. It would hardly be there at all. On the other hand, you could etch that all day and you would almost go right through the metal, and you would have a line that is almost in relief and very coarse and broken. So the, the thing with, with etching, over and above all the other techniques and things like that, it's, it's an understanding of time and how the acid is going to work for you. Um, so that's, that's, um, that's one thing. The other thing is that different metals operate differently. Uh, zinc is a much... Um, uh, when you etch with zinc, the, the line tends to expand a little bit, and it's a slightly sort of softer metal, so that it, um, for things like aquatins and things like that, it will perhaps um, survive a little bit less. With copper, you can get the very finest of line because the acid will tend to bite vertically. Whereas in, um, with zinc, do a diagram. If, if here's your plate, and that's the wax ground on top, when you make a, a line, the acid will bite down and across. So the, so the longer you leave it, 
the line becomes coarser and wider. With copper, it tends to sort of bite truer. Um, so, the, the ink is, is um, you know, the quality of the ink and how loose the ink is and things like that, that will affect the final print. And obviously, the choice of paper. I mean, there will be a little bit of choice for you uh, today, but it, it's, it's something that would be very interesting for you to try, is printing uh, the same print on a variety of different papers. You know, a very, um, you know, very thin, hard paper will give you a very sort of sharp um, um, impression, but quite flat. On the other hand, if you use you know, quite a thick, softer paper that will draw out all the ink and you'll have much more of a relief quality. So, you know, in the end, what you have to think of is that the, the print is a kind of an object that goes out into the world. And that, as I said, is the, the um, combination of your choice of ink, paper, the metal that you've used, and the way that you've orchestrated time. Now, I'm going to mainly sort of, um, you know, talk about hard ground etching, and you know, as a starting point for, for this workshop. And if you um, remember that this was the print technology that Rembrandt had, that's you know, he had hard ground and engraving. Do you all know the difference between etching and engraving? Let me just start on a, on, on a basic thing. Before the use of acids, um, etching was, uh, engraving was done with a, a tool which you push into the metal and your physical effort makes a line, a scratch. And that scratch will then hold ink. So the harder you press, the darker the line. Now, obviously, that's a very, very skilled process because, you know, um, you know, every 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 mistake, you know, has to be sort of polished out and things like that. So the engraving is in any kind of plate, like uh, metal or wood. Any, any kind of metal. In fact, it was done. You can engrave into wood as well. Okay. Yeah. They, they would use different tools, but um, yeah, but then it's the it's same. But we don't. We can call dry dry point to them in the metals to engraving in the metal. It's dry um, point or or it's well different. Well, engraving um, engraving is done with a tool. That's that shaped. Okay. So you push this this point, and that kind of in a way carves a line. Um, what what you just mentioned, dry point, is done with a needle just a pointed needle and that that just is just how hard you press yeah. but real engraving is when you're actually pushing and you're cutting the line so i cannot uh, call this dry point no no, no. okay no. Um, now the the big innovation when it came to, um, let me the, the thing with engraving is it required an, all, a lot of technical skill. And so a lot of the um, early engravings were engravings done by master engravers after an artist's painting or drawing. So the artist would hand over a drawing and that would then be professionally engraved. Um, and in fact, in some ways, that kind of tradition of the professional uh, printer as opposed to the artist printer really went right through into the um, 20th century. I mean, for example, Degas, who is now regarded as one of the great uh, etchers, none of his prints were shown at the academies because they were seen to be too crude. The only prints of Degas were prints that were made by professional engravers after his paintings and drawings. 
and they were seen to extol the virtues of engraving. Anyway, I digress. Um, the, the, the big innovation occurred with etching when they realized that if you waxed a piece of metal and you scratched a line on it, instead of the physical effort required to cut the line, the acid would cut the line for you. And the early uh, etchings were developed from the armors, the, um, the <coughs> guild that would decorate armor for princes and things like that. And obviously, when you're drawing onto a wax surface, you could work much more freely. You don't need any particular technical skill. And so this really meant that, that artists could have much more control, direct control, over um, the, the process themselves, instead of being reliant on doing a drawing and then having that translated by an engraver. So are you with me so far? Mm -hmm. Right? Now, um, those of you that were at the um, session yesterday, uh, I introduced uh, two prints by Rembrandt, two versions of his famous series, The Three Crosses. And what was so important about Rembrandt in terms of his approach to etching was that instead of saying that a print had to have one solution. So you worked from the beginning to make a print, and then you started again on something else. Rembrandt saw it as a process, and as a way of thinking, so that once he finished one stage of a print, that then provided the starting point for other possibilities. So there were lots of different versions of the same print, uh, different reworkings and things like this. So he was exploring it in, in a very kind of creative way. Um, after that, the next innovation was Aquatint, which enabled you to, um, the artist, to put a tone onto an area of, of etching. And then later on, there was photo etching and things like that. Um, anyway, what I'm going to do is um, talk about some work that I've prepared that I'm going to etch and hopefully print while we're here today. And, um, and also to suggest the way that now the computer can actually come into this process, this thinking process as well. Now, um, Just one question. Yeah. That's my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ah, very good question. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, none of you, please don't be embarrassed to ask any question because, um, you know, we all know different things and, and sometimes I will uh, jump stages. Um, Mohammed, if you have a, an etching plate, mm -hmm. could you just pass me the spare bit? That's, that's fine. Okay. So, that's your piece of copper. Um, now, in order to work onto that, what we do is we put a wax ground over the whole surface. That's this what you've got here on, on these plates. The wax is acid resistant. So that means that the whole plate is sealed. You also need to protect the back as well. So if I put a hard ground over the whole plate and sealed the back and put it in the acid, nothing would happen. It would be completely protected. Now the moment I scratch into the, into the wax, that enables the acid to go through the wax and start etching the metal. And that's really all you need to know about etching. <laughs> um, you know, um, about 300 years of etching was done with just that uh, experience. 
So um, I think it's always best to try and keep things simple. And then the thing is that you as artists bring the complexity. You know, that, that your, your philosophical and creative ideas are the things that make the etching interesting or, or not. Um, keep things simple and direct to start off with and then invent as you need, okay? Now, one of the other things about a, an etching paint is that once you've um, put the wax on it, you can, you can draw with it, onto it, with anything that will scratch through the uh, metal. So we've got a number of tools You know, there's a whole range of tools that all have different shape, different shapes and edges and things like that. Um, some that are very, very fine, some that are going to be thicker. But you can also use your own tools. You know, you can, you, you can draw with a, um, any bit of metal or something that will scratch through the wax. Um, so, so it's very, very flexible. The other thing is to remember that it's poss possible to remove what you've etched as well. And we'll show you how to do that a bit later on. So, with that, these are some images that I worked on before coming here. Um, Um, and you can see that these, are, these have actually been drawn on the computer. In, you can see that it's worked on in layers. It's worked on in layers. Now, one of the things that I find uh, very useful is that working on the computer means that I can try things out, move things around, and I mean, this may not look like it, but I spent, you know, on and off the best part of, um, you know, two or three days developing this. And there were lots of stages that got edited out. But it, mean, it means that I can play with the image and the composition before I've got involved in anything technical. And it means that anything that I want to move or change, I can do, um, I can do very quickly. One of the things about etching is that once you commit to an image, if there are things that you want to change, you've got to physically scrape out the metal and do it. And I've tried to sort of develop ways of being what I call being sophisticatedly lazy. <laughs> you know, to, um, to, you know, life's too short, and I want to kind of try and anticipate things that, that I might want to change so that um, I can really concentrate on, on this. Now, the other um, thing that is very useful about working with computer, and this is something we haven't match, mentioned, is that the image that I've drawn here is a mirror version of the image that will come out. Because this will be printed, we'll, we'll have uh, a piece of paper put on top of this when we print it, and that will then be a mirror image of this. Now that means that if there's any things that are compositionally really important to have the right way round, or for example if you've got any writing or things like that and you want to ensure that's the right way round, it's very easy on your computer to actually um, you know, draw, this, draw this image the way you want it and then, um, then just go to... Um, And it's, it's 
then reversed. And then back and then they printed out and traced out. So what I did was that um, I did some um, sim simple inject from these from, from the drawings. I stuck them down like that. I used carbon paper. I put some carbon paper um, through like that and then just drew, redrew the image. Then I could see the image on the plate and then I could redraw that using the matching needle. Now there's also uh, a way that you can use soft ground, uh, but I thought that it would be so hot here that soft ground would tend to too soft. Too soft. <laughs> it would be too soft. Melt. <laughs> so that was another bit of anticipation. So. Okay. So these are. Can you explain in a bit more detail how to use the the carbon paper? Carbon paper. Dead easy. Yeah. Uh, imagine there's a ground on that. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. And the polyvinyl. And the polyvinyl. No. 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 Okay. Okay. Now, um, what I want to do with these with, with these prints is to start now using the acid in the way that I was talking to you about to actually determine different kind of characteristics. Now, I've already etched this for a little bit, but I'm going to. Oops. <laughs> you can see that I'm a bit bumbling sometimes. <laughs> I better stop that out. Uh, I'm going to put these in the um, in the acid now for another ten minutes, and then uh, I'm going to do I'm going to treat one plate in one way, which will be that I will start stopping out um, some areas of the print, and then putting it back in the acid doing that three or four times, so that then there'll be different kinds of uh, black. For the other print, uh, I will take a print of it at this stage and have a look at it, and then we can think about putting a ground on again and doing more drawing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to sort of take two processes. Does that seem, mm -hmm. seem clear? Mm -hmm. So. Um, um, there's going to be nothing spectacular happening in the next <laughs> 10 minutes. Uh, we're we're going to put these in the acid. Um, one thing, uh, I'm sure Margarita sort of told you, be very careful about lifting the, the lid. The lid, yeah, yeah. the, the um, Janelle one. Okay. Yeah, we don't want any, any accidents. So if you want a cigarette break or something like that, all that I'm going to do now <laughs> is put these them. in the acid. <laughs> For about ten minutes, and, and they're not going to turn into smoke. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I was saying to Marguerite, the um, the first um, masterclass I ever did was in um, in Cyprus in Nicosia, and um, this was uh, uh, it was inaugurating a, a, a workshop, and it had never been used before. So I had to tell them all the equipment to get and things like this, and they got me industrial. Um, quality nitric acid, um, which when you lifted the lid, a brown plume came out, <laughs> caught the breeze, and when it was like a cartoon, <laughs> and you imagined that it destroying everything in its path, you know, that there being a hole through Nicosia. So we quickly put the lid back on, and the, uh, the first plate we put in, uh, you know, we just, we just put it in and it disappeared. 
and, uh, and so Magic. <laughs> but uh, as you can imagine, I'm doing this in front of an audience, you know, and uh, my my credentials are <laughs> getting lower and lower. Well, the fumes but, must have yeah. been extraordinary but when you put the, the plate in it. It disappears. There has well, to be well, it was fumes. bubbling. It was like you know something from a horror film. You know? <laughs> anyway, we. Um, you know, you, you have to use uh, some jokes and, uh, and a bit of comedy routine and uh, <laughs> pretend you know what you're doing. <laughs> so hopefully this is going to be much more successful. <laughs> so do you want to sort of um, take, a, take a break for yeah. ten minutes and, and then we'll... No, we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> is there, um, did you put extra chlorine on yeah, it? Yeah. Just to protect that. Yeah. 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 actually said something about these images. Um, the one of the things I've been doing for, for a long time is working on uh, imagery that is sort of in a way derived from still life, uh, but not uh, observed still life as in setting something up and drawing from it, but thinking about our relationship to objects and the way that um, as we go through life, um, there are objects that we connect with 
and we have quite intimate relationships with. And often those objects are of very little value. Things like our keys, um, you know, a pair of scissors, a comb, things like this that are things that are very essential and also have been part of civilization for really a long time. Um, you know, things have a key hasn't changed that much. You know, the comb, you can see a comb from uh, uh, Egyptian times and it's not so much different. They got the idea pretty quickly. And what I've been trying to do is sort of make images which actually suggest the interconnectivity of things and the way that if one sort of thinks of a life as a whole, you've got to sort of somehow try and get everything working together. It's a little bit like if you've got a car, there's no use putting a Rolls Royce engine in a Mini. You know, it's, um, you, you actually have to sort of you know, think of something as a whole. And um, so that's the kind of philosophical side of, of, the, um, of, the, of the work. There's also uh, a slightly playful side as well. Um, you, can, you can just grab the other plate for me. It's, it's just by the acid bar. I'll greet it. Yeah, that one. Um, so um, in, in these prints, um, ideas and imagery are slightly um, camouflaged. So it's almost as if I want you to, like in children's games, where you begin to sort of try and find things. Um, this print develops another kind of game, which is, uh, I love playing snooker. Um, so th this, this image was, was begun by drawing a number of still life objects and, um, and then setting a line in motion. And the rule was that if it hit an object, it would bounce back. And then when it hit the edge, it would bounce back. So actually this is, you'll see this print is actually made up of one line that is just sort of whizzing around. And in some ways that seems also a bit of a metaphor for the way that um, lives are kind of constructed. And you know, there are obstacles to overcome and, um, and connections that are being made and things like that. And that's the end of the philosophy bit. <laughs> um, the rest is sort of very practical. Now, we've had um, these prints and I can tell by um, putting feel in the plate that they've etched and so that so I'm going to sort of take two approaches to these. Um, one one of the prints I'm going to take a print of now so that we can actually see what it looks like. And in a way treat that as a kind of beginning. Because it will probably mean that I'll need to put a ground on again and make some areas much darker and things like this. But I think it would be quite useful for us to see what's going on. Um, in this print, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start stopping out some areas of the uh, print and putting it back in the acid. And for that, we use this gooey stop out. And I'm going to Paint out this um, the background. This is literally as boring as watching paint dry. I am sorry. Uh, I wish there was a way. What I really need is an assistant that can do conjuring tricks or something like that. To <laughs> you know. Or open acid bins. Exactly. So <laughs> do fumes. If any of you know any jokes, now's the time to start <laughs> <laughs> developing your stand-up routine. Um, so, uh, uh, one of, there's a very famous story about, um, do you all know the American artist de Kooning? Mm -hmm. um, well, you know there was a film made of uh, Jackson Pollock painting? Mm -hmm. you know, you've probably all seen that. Well, they wanted to make a film about um, de Kooning. 
And uh, he was very reluctant. And eventually he agreed. And the camera crew, no offence, <laughs> and they all turned up. And he had the canvas on the wall, and he went on it like this for about two hours, finished the painting, and everyone went away happy. And about two weeks later, the film crew um, contacted him and said, look, we need some stills of the paint, finished painting, uh, you know, so that we can finish off the film. And he said, well, I don't have the painting. And they said, well, what do you mean? Have you sold it already? He said, no, I, I tore it up. And they said, why? Why is that? He said, because I don't paint like that. <laughs> uh, he said, because if, if um, you watch me painting, you'd be so bored. Because uh, most of the time I'm sitting in my chair <laughs> thinking about what to do. So, anyway, there's a moral in that. Um, this won't take me long. that it's dry before um, you put it in acid because otherwise it will just lift off.
see the image. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be fairly uh, light. Now, before we <coughs> before we take a print of this, what we have to do is file the edges because these edges are very sharp. And when we put it through the press, um, in fact, one of the most important bits of the etching studio are the blankets, the woolen blankets. And so, um, in order to, pr to protect those, we need to file the edges so that we have a bevel. So then that means that when the paper is put on top and it's put, run through the press under pressure, it doesn't cut the paper or, more importantly, the, um, the blankets. Okay, so <coughs> that's... Um, In the end, you only want to be in the grooves, but you have to ink it all first, and then we clean off the plate and see what's there. Now, you must promise not to be disappointed when you see the results, because this is the first, this, this is real life rather than TV. <laughs> and, uh, The plate that I've just done the stop out on. Could you dry the, the stop out? The stop out yep, and then sure. we can put that back in the acid. Okay. Which one is it? Is it the one on the left? The big one. Thank you. 
fork as much as you can with this. Printmaking resembles running a pizza parlor. <laughs> uh. So basically, with etching, what you've got to remember is that etching is, uh, is an intaglio process. An intaglio means below the surface. So basically, um, now all these rules can be broken. But in Intaglio, the surface is clean and the only ink is in the lines that have been etched down. Now, but there's, it's quite legitimate to keep ink on the surface as well. So we can try lots of different experimental ways of, of inking. There's as many ways of inking as there are people. Um, but if you just sort of think in, in, in basic principle, it's the line that has been etched is the line that will hold ink. And the deeper that line, the more ink, the darker it will be. Um, when you were cleaning, yeah. um, well, uh, the surface, this part, yeah. is it easier to clean? Yeah, because um, that makes the ink a little bit looser. Mm -hmm. And then you can maestro. Yes, should I just? Yeah. Now with, with etching, it's always great to work with someone because... <coughs> I'm just trying to figure out... Do you want me to make a mark? Yeah, I think if you just make a, a one mm. mark or at the mm. top so that I know where to stop. Yeah. Perfect. And when you're actually doing an uh, additioning, you would have a template down yeah. so that you know exactly where the plate is and where the edge of the paper is. Registration. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is a. Um,
Now what you really need to do is combine the etching studio with a health farm <laughs> and you have people volunteering to do this and uh, okay. Now the first thing that you notice is the plate is embossed. So I mean that's that's something that you might want to use uh, in your thinking about printmaking. I mean if you have any sort of flat shapes down, you know, then they can be is there anything there? Yeah. Okay. I uh, have just stick it on top, that's it. So this is sort of you know fairly light. But this now gives you know I've now got something which is that I can work on. Um, when you've got a, a, a proof, you can then start working onto it in pen and ink or drawing and things like that to actually um, think what you're going to do next. So you know you might find that you've you've got to this stage and you, you're not quite sure what to do. So you might take three or four prints at this stage and then develop each one as a drawing before you then think what, you know, uh, what, what's going to happen. Um, what I'm going to do um, with this now is put another, clean off the ink, degrease it, put another ground on, so to seal all this, so everything that's here will stay as it is. And then I'm going to get the needle and put it back in the lines, redraw some of those lines and etch them much deeper. And then develop it like that. At this stage, what I don't want to do is start adding more complexity. Uh, I want to kind of, in a way, keep the relationship of the, the drawing to the whole. But for some of you, that may be, you know, that, that you, you think you want to then start working with cross-hatching and building up areas and things like that. I suppose what, what I don't want to do is give you any idea that there are rules that you have to obey. Um, you know, that the, the, the wonderful thing um, about, about etching is that you're dealing really with the ultimate bit of paper. Um, if you were working on a drawing, and let's say this was your drawing, you, you would only have be able to come to one conclusion. And then if you wanted to do a variation on that, you'd have to start right from the beginning again with a completely fresh drawing. There is no reason why you can't work for months on the same print, producing an ever-changing development of ideas from a single motif. Um, you can take risks that you perhaps wouldn't do. I mean, let's say, for example, you, if I was really delighted with this at this stage, which I'm not, <laughs> if I was, I could take a small addition, and then that's, that's done. Then what I do with the plate next, I could risk lots of things. I could do the things that maybe I wouldn't have the courage to do if I was going to lose all my artwork. Um, if you, if you want to remove anything, if there's anything here that I, in fact, maybe what I should do is, should I show you just how to remove something for the hell of it? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, right. Let's, uh, should we? Um, uh, do you want me to put it on the table or a uh, flat it? is the reverse how to get rid of something mm -hmm. so then in a way you, you've got the equivalent of the pencil and the eraser okay or as um, one of my students um, from London went to do a uh, uh, a class in America uh, this was years ago, and uh, announced to all these 16-year-olds, uh, will you all now get out your pencils and your rubbers? And, of course, that is condoms. And the whole class collapsed, and they couldn't gain control again. So anyway, that's <laughs> another Anyway. Um, to remove something is 
dead easy. Let's say we're going to remove this area here. You literally, with, with this tool, you can, this is a scraper tool, and you literally sc just scrape the metal. And if I just show you in diagram what we're doing, if, um, if here's the metal plate and that's the line you've drawn that you want to get rid of, what we're doing is we're scraping away the metal here mm -hmm. and there, so then that becomes smooth. So. Now, you can use this as a means of drawing as well. I mean, you know, there are a lot of artists, for example, not like Giacometti, who, when he's using the eraser, is actually making as positive a statement as when he's using the pencil. So, if I, if I left this um, just quite, quite crudely scraped, this would hold ink and give a sort of uh, a tone to it. Um, but if I wanted to remove it completely, then I just have to do a bit of polishing. Now the one thing, um, you remember we were talking about engraving? Well, when Barto was at the Slade, there was um, the professor of, of engraving before Barto was Tony Gross, Anthony Gross. And he was a very proper Englishman. But his first class that he would have with the students, he would give everyone a metal plate and he'd say, now I want you to make the darkest line you can possibly make on this. Then, and then, then he said, OK, now I want you to get rid of it. <laughs> and so he really then had to spend hours burnishing it out. So anyway, with just a little bit of uh, oil and this back end of the, uh, this is the burnisher. This then um, basically polishes that down. And that, that's now gone. And, you know, so it, it's not really a big deal, really. Okay? Um, so for this, for this plate now, I'm going to clean off all the ink, because there's still ink in the grooves. Um, I'm going to degrease it and put a ground on again. And then I can redraw areas and what I'll be doing is putting the needle I can feel the the line through the ground and I'll be putting the needle in and redrawing it and then re-etching it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll okay. keep drawing Great. <laughs> so no that, that's we've done we've tried that. That's okay. a yes, okay. that's Good. fine. So any any questions so so far? And how are we doing with the filming? Are you <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't speak to the crew. <laughs> <laughs> um, any any so questions? I will just ask them if, if they know the, the third of Portuguese, okay? Uh, if they know, because I'm not talking oh. English, <laughs> if they know the term of yeah. Portuguese, do you want to explain? Sim, eu só vou perguntar. Ah, vocês percebem o etching é a nossa arte forte. Aquele outro processo que o Paulo falou mais cedo de fazer uh, diretamente na chapa é com o bril, depois há a ponta seca. Isto, isto é, um, é um rascador brunidor também, este lado é um rascador, este lado é um brunidor. E é só, só ver termos que vocês não, não estejam a perceber qual é a tradução. Uh, so it's one of the things when you're teaching etching, you have to make sure your students like you because you're giving them weapons. <laughs> so if I end up like Saint Sebastian, then I know I failed. <laughs> okay. Um, so 
as the next 10 minutes are going to be boring again, I'm afraid. So I'll clean this out, put the ground on. And, um, and meanwhile, the other plate is etching. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in, in a while, I'll take that out again, stop out some more areas, and put that in. OK? Branco de Espanha. É Portugal é de Espanha. E agora, isso é a Alpha. Industrial Alpha. Sim. Vou achar um pouco com alcoolismo e com pó de Espanha. Só Branco de Espanha. Não sei o que é isso. See that it's degreased because the, the water flows over it very easily. Margarita? Yes? Is that the roller? Be very careful when you um, with this that you don't put it on the ground because it will get dust on it. So always put it back there. Um,
And what we're doing is, this is just smoking the plate. You don't, um, you don't touch it with the taper, you just touch it with the flame. And you can see that the carbon from the, um, from the flame is fixing into the hard ground. And that gives a very hard surface and also a very dark surface, so it's much easier to see what, what, what you've drawn. Now, when you stamp out the flame, make sure you're not wearing flip-flops. <laughs> And then you see it's, and then when that cools, that's a very good hard surface, and you can see exactly what you're doing. Right? So actually, this flame doesn't doesn't melt out the the wax. No, it, it's the carbon from the flame um, fixes into the wax. We can just stop that. Thank you. Just stop that. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Do this as much as much as you want. I'm now going to put that in for another 10 minutes or so. I'll just dry it off. And I'll get the other plate over. Right. Now, you have to get the uh, light right so that you can catch the, 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 the drawing. Um, okay. um, now, I, um, I lent on it while it was still warm, so um, I need to leave that for a little bit longer. But, but basically, um, You can see that you can put the needle in the line and then I'll be able to then put that back in the acid and etch everything you know, a lot darker. Uh, but this is going to take a little bit of time, so this will be boring watching the version. But also I need to let it cool. Uh, I'm used to working in England. Where you don't get this heat as well, so things cool much quicker. Um, any questions? How many minutes did you put in the first one? Well, we had, we had to sort of experiment a little bit with the acid. I yeah. think that we, we should be able to get a kind of clearer idea. It looks like it's etching fairly well now, yeah. so you, you might want to go and check it. <laughs> 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 because às vezes o ácido pode pode demorar um pouco até começar a fazer a reação.
força do aço e do lado pode mas está bastante forte. Uma pergunta, vocês, tu e o Simão, já fizeram gravura antes ou não? Primeira vez. Eu só fiz a gravura. Ok, está bem. Então é bom voltar a fazer isto assim, mas acho que não é uma vez está a ver mais Sim, eu também acho que é uma coisa que eu vou fazer. Esta semana quer ver, quer ver se fazer as coisas. Que é muito aprendente também. Há muitos processos, como se fizer no Colorado, que é também uma apresentação, eu posso mostrar também as coisas que se fazem.
Uh, it's important to really work the ink in all, all over the plate because um, otherwise you'll get lines which don't have any ink in. Now this you'll see a, a big difference between this print and the, the, the first one we did because I'd, um, I started this in London so I'd, I'd already started to etch it. So that's beginning to get somewhere. Um, I mean, obviously, there are all kinds of options. You know, one could actually watercolor into into this as well. Hand coloring is completely legitimate. Uh, one more, um, I need to sort of think about exactly what I'm going to do next. 
But as I said, what I wanted to do was to kind of connect, uh, create a kind of, uh, almost a system like a kind of web. You know, um, do you know, you know that theory that if a butterfly flaps its wings in Brazil, then there's a hurricane in London, <laughs> or something like that. Uh, you know, I'm very interested in the way that even the most, even the little things are, are kind of connected. And in some ways I want to suggest a kind of life as a, as a, as a metaphor for a, for a life and as a, a game and a, the way that uh, all these little things can actually start to mean something. You know, there's a, a wishbone which might mean chance, I don't know. Suitcase which might mean travel or disruption. There's a ring because without romance we're all dead. Um, there's a needle, because the needle in a haystack. So in a way, I hope you kind of find that. Um, there's a bottle, because I'm sure we're going to have a drink soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, a hair clip is, you know, often... Uh, I, I had a big show in Cambridge, and the curator said to me that I was the kind of person who was interested in houses when the person has died and they're clearing it. Because it's all the little things, you know, like the hair clip in the carpet. Um, and, things like that, you know. and this is just a big cameo, you know. So it's, it's not earth shattering, but it begins to suggest something. Can I just say something? You yeah. were talking about hand colouring yeah. and some of the, the elements, and Barto used to do that frequently. Yeah. And he also did something else, with, uh, which is chin collet. Yeah that is to place bits of paper on the plate between the plate and the, yeah. the yeah. printing paper and he would do that uh, in a very precise way yeah. um, so that for example we would spend hours cutting shapes like let's say the suitcase yeah. and the, the wishbone for example and then place it almost uh. like a surgeon on the plate and then we would mm -hmm. have uh, uh, an area of color for, for something. Fact, you did that also with Barbara, didn't you? Sure. He yeah. was very interested in that. Shall we take another print of this? And I'll show you where we rub a bit of ink, colored ink, mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. one of the areas. Yeah. Yeah. And so that sort of opens up another possibility. Yeah. Okay, shall I do that? <laughs> yes. Yes. You, you lot don't mind me working, do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to put this one here. Uh, so, if you can take another print, you don't need to clean the ink, but you need to put, most of that ink has been drawn out.
This one is a bit dirty in the back, so I turned it around. Does, um, does the speed that you crank the crank affect the, the print? No. Because no. pressure is pressure. pressure, is pressure. Yeah. But that one is easier to control because it moves as you pull. That one, this one can actually gain momentum. Oh. So you have to be quite careful with it. <laughs> I should have, have um, cleaned that out more and had some more. Anyway, you understand the principle. Because the black has yeah. this kind of thing of power, the power yeah. that yeah. goes yeah. over most inks. Yeah. No, also, uh, something that you. Um, Something's worth thinking about when you're when you're etching is the edge of the plate is a physical edge. It's it's embossed. So in some ways that has um, a kind of it, it has a very particular quality and you need to think about whether you want to use that edge or whether you want to move in and make your own edge. Mm -hmm. For for me it was important in this image that I made my own edge. What I've now got to do is clean this all up so this edge then disappears. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, and I'll also need to polish the edges mm -hmm. again so that they are really clean and things like that. In some ways, that kind of prep preparation just takes a bit of time, mm -hmm. and when you've got an audience, <laughs> it's, um, and, um, but do you think it's okay for pressure? Perfect. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because good. always you need to be careful yeah. with how thick your plate is and yeah. how much pressure you have, and sometimes it's just like a tiny yeah. difference that will have a great impact on your image. The so other thing about um, about etching is that you have the uh, capacity to make an incredibly strong thin line. You know, you can see how sort of powerful these are and how those lines are not merging and becoming one. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I did when I was drawing this and, and inking it up was to actually think about how dense I wanted to make the lines because if you make them too dense then it, the line breaks down and it becomes a bit of a grey. Um, I think that um, I there are a few dots here, sorry, I just realised. No, no, that's a drawn dot. That's the beginning yeah. of the line and the end of the line. Okay, that's what I was <laughs> yeah. wondering. What, and the, and what were those? Yeah, yeah, no, no, okay. they're intentional. And there's a bit of more density between yeah. the suitcase and the wishbone. Yeah, yeah. This <laughs> is the accumulation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to, to flatten these out Great. under uh, a board. Lovely, okay.